Hello, buddy. Big do hello, everybody. Why can I not speak today? Uh, big dog telephone here in my Garfield PJs because I have immeasurable amounts of drip and or swagger. Um, <laughs> uh, anyways, hi guys. Uh, hopefully, uh, you, 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 I don't I don't know what I was gonna say there. I was gonna say hopefully Ethan lets me upload this video to this channel, but he has always said if I ever want to upload on Blade Bias that I can. Uh, anyways, so Ethan gave me a little care package the other day, which I will first of all show uh, because it is a few things. First of all, this little uh, this little case here, or not case, this little stand here, uh, it's made by Manifold 3D. I think you should be able to see that there, hopefully. Uh, made by Manifold 3D over on Instagram. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, Ethan had a spare, so he let me take this one, um, and it is a very cool case. Holds Holds a little bit of oil there. Ah, uh, holds five ballast songs. And uh, yeah, so Ethan sent me a small care package and I will get through all of these one by one. Let me turn my lights back to white. There we go. Oh, that one didn't change. Oh boy, now I start this process. Okay, we're good. Oh, now those two are off color. Oh no. That's red. There we go. Okay, I need soft white. Thank you. Oh my goodness, the, the, that's the problem with having cheap LED bulbs. Uh, anyways, so Ethan sent me a little care package, and I will go through these one by one in different videos. Uh, but I wanted to start with the Albert, Squiddy Al, uh, because this is the one that I have had on my mind for a while. I have wanted an Albert for a good amount of time. Um, so we're going to start with the Squiddy Al here. And then I'll move on to the Volt Pro and the Orion in separate videos. Um, the Al is probably the one. Well, no, the Volt Pro is definitely going to be the one that I have the most to say about. Um, but Al is very cool because he just is. Um, so at Blade Show, okay, I had heard about the concept of a, of a metal squiddy before this was announced. I had heard about the concept. I was not given any information, and even if I had been given that information, it's not like I could tell you about anything. Um, I had been briefly told that s someone at Squid was thinking about making a metal Squiddy, and I was asked my opinions. And and and, and a metal Squiddy is something that people have thought about for a long time, and I couldn't properly justify it because anytime I thought about a metal Squiddy, I was thinking, oh price point because at the end of the day squid is a business they do have to sell things and we are consumers we do have to buy things so the mako which is in my backpack unfortunately i don't have it on me right now um is one of my favorite balasong trainers because it's cheap and it's fun it's goofy looking but like in a cute way and it's just very good to just casually flip to beat on because it's cheaper you know Especially buying one secondhand, you can get them for a very affordable price. So, that is why the Mako is one of my favorites. Um, but then the Squiddies are even cheaper, yes, but they don't hold tune as well. They don't flip nearly as good, in my opinion. Um, and they're made of plastic, which is the trade-off for the $50 to $70 price tag that most of them sit in. So when we're looking at the Squiddy Owl, and even in theory, you think a fully aluminum Squiddy. Okay, so it's going to flip like a Squiddy. Now, Squid has done a very good job, uh, you know, balancing this out to a point where it works. But I'm talking in concept before this is revealed. When, you know, as a community, we're just speculating about what would a metal Squiddy look like. First thought that I had was... Well, the first two thoughts, I guess. It's going to flip like a Squiddy, which is honestly not ideal. Squiddies are good for their price and good because they are plastic. But realistically, I don't think most... I mean, there's a reason most people don't flip Squiddies on a high level because they're just not built for it. Um, amazing learning tools, yes. But they're not built for high-level flipping. Um so, my first thought, it's going to flip like a Squiddy, and also, uh, it's going to be more expensive than a Squiddy. And all aluminum, 
on washers, because this is an aluminum blade too. It is aluminum on aluminum pinsless design. So all aluminum on washers, it's gonna be more expensive than probably the most expensive Squiddy, which is already 75, I believe. Uh, well, now it's 80 something, because Will's Squiddy is more expensive. Um, but I think the at the time, the most expensive Squiddy was the Squiddy A, which was 75, I wanna say. Um, geez. And uh, I, I just couldn't justify it because then you're approaching Mako territory. And maybe I'm biased because I love the funny shark battle song so much. Let me go get it actually. It's just right here. Maybe I'm biased because I love the funny shark battle song so much. But, um, you know, after that point, oh. Hi, bud. Can you see him? Can you see him? I think you can see him. There you go. Um, but, you know, after a certain point, it's kind of... They're stepping on their own toes a little bit. And that's a problem that I've noticed Squid tends to do. Um, they tend to release products that are in competition with their other products. And, you know, for a while, this... Jeez. For a while, this was not the case. When it was just... Um, you know, when when Squid's lineup was just, you know, Squid Trainer, Kraken, Squiddy, regular, Mako, you know, there wasn't too much overlap. But now we're getting a lot of overlap. And now, you know, with the Triton in there, well, the Triton's always been around. Um, but the Triton B V2 is encroaching the price point of what the Squid Trainer was at. And things are kind of starting to weave in and out, especially with things like the Swordfish coming into play. And now the Squiddy L. You know, there's just a lot. I was worried about the overlap. I was worried one of these two products is going to become obsolete. And I'd say I was maybe not correct, but I there's a hint of truth in that now that the Squiddy L has been released. Um, so basically, my other thought was that this is a third thought that I'm just remembering now. This, the Mako is like my safe in public flipper because this stays in my backpack because let's say I get stopped because I'm flipping and, I, and somebody's like, hey, what is that? Is that a knife? I can say, no, it's a bottle opener. And that's it. It doesn't look like a knife. I tell people it's a bottle opener and they go, oh, okay, it's a bottle opener. Problem solved. Um, but, you know, that is one of the reasons that I had the make on why I flip it so much. So anyways, this is a lot of rambling um, to not even actually talk about Albert yet, but I know you guys like long videos, so whatever. Enjoy enjoy doing your homework while you watch Blade Bias videos. Uh, yeah, Albert. So I was very, very hesitant on Albert. Um, I was very, very unsure of where it would sit in the market and if it would flip good and if it would be worth it because of a lot of things. Mostly the fact that the Mako's handles are very, very, very bland and boring. And I figured, oh, the Squiddies all just have a flat plastic texture, which already struggles with grip. So turning that into aluminum is gonna suck. It's not gonna be good. The Mako barely holds on because of its gills. But especially doing that on a Squiddy, it's gonna suck ass. So fast forward a couple months, I, I was not on board with the idea. I thought, hey, maybe it would be cool, but it's not something that Squid should be focusing on, in my opinion. that's That was my thought process, right? So fast forward to Blade Show uh, this past year, 2022 Blade Show. And no, 2023 Blade Show. Yeah, because it's 2024 now. Um, I stroll up to Squid's booth while um, Will and Brandon were about to interview Lucas. And, okay, all is good. You know, I tried the prototypes earlier on the show, and they're about to do an interview with Lucas. Lucas turns to me, hands me an Albert, and then walks away and go does his interview. So I can't talk to him. I can't give him my feedback. So... For the entirety of that interview, I'm sitting there holding the Albert. And I don't know if they've shown the prototype off yet. 
I don't think, I don't know if it was on the table or not, but that was the first time I had seen it, was Lucas handing it to me and then going off and doing something else. So I was basically forced to like watch over this, <laughs> this, uh, um, I'm gonna practice my scissors. I was basically forced to watch over the, the prototype Albert um, while Lucas was doing his interview. So I did get to spend maybe 10 minutes just sitting there flipping the Albert, which is a lot more time than you usually get to flip something at Blade Show. At Blade Show with prototypes, you usually get two minutes max. You really don't have a lot of time to properly evaluate things. And battle songs do take a lot of time to evaluate, especially when you try 80 of them in one day. So I was sitting there and I had been, Blade Show last year was very weird for me because that was when I had started to fall away from the community. And the only reason I was there was because I had already made the promise to everyone else that I would be there. Um, because I bailed super early. I left like a couple hours into Sunday. I would have left on Saturday if I didn't already have or reservations to stay there. Um, it was really weird last year. And I can confidently say this year, I am a lot more excited for Blade Show. Uh, and I'm a lot more excited on the community as a whole. I took my well needed break, but maybe that's on a different video. Um, but nothing was really exciting me at Blade Show last year. I just didn't care for 99% of the things I tried. And then Lucas handed me this. And my first impressions went a little like this. I was wrong. I need one of these right now. And for the next 10 minutes, I proceeded to have so, I, I proceeded to have more fun flipping a ballast song than I have had in months at that point. And there is something to be said with me liking, you know, the Mako. I like ch cheaper ballast songs. I don't know what it is, but I really like the form factor. Um, Albert is significant, not, maybe not significantly, but Albert is quite a bit smaller than a lot of other battle songs. You can see, especially the handles are quite a bit smaller. Um, I am a big fan of smaller, lighter, lighter, easier to flip battle songs. And Al just worked and it just felt good. And the one major thing I had issues with or concerns about was the texture. And not only is there an amazing surface texture, this is pretty much identical to the surface texture on the squid trainers, but it's on a nice polished aluminum and the side texturing, it's something you can't really see in footage, but there is a texturing on the sides. This thing has better grip than the Mako, in my opinion, from my own personal experience. And for 85, I believe $85, it sits at a price where yes, it does compete, oops, it does compete with the Mako. But remember when I said earlier that one of these two products is gonna become kind of obsolete? I think the Mako has become slightly obsolete here because what reason do you have to buy a Mako other than it looks cool? And really, unfortunately, with the Albert being around, I don't feel like there is one because the one thing I loved the Mako for, well, not one thing. There's a lot of things I love the Mako for. It's still one of my favorite trainers of all time. The main things I loved the Mako for is that it's cheaper so you don't have to cry every time it hits the ground. It can be beat up pretty well. It takes a decent beating. I mean, the Mako blade bends, which is not great, but along that cheaper line, it's like, you know, I'm not gonna absolutely, again, cry when it hits the ground. It's a great public flipper because you have an excuse if somebody does stop you. But then you have this, which takes all of the flaws of the Mako, which is most importantly, the grip, and just does it better. It's a better public flipper because there is literally no resemblance of a blade. It, it, the whole point of squiddies is that they're easy to use public flippers 
And that's what the Al is. The balance is fantastic. It's a little, it takes a little getting used to, definitely. But once you do get used to it, it flips really, really well because of this eye weight system, which you can remove these bottom screws and you can also remove the eye weights. I like it with everything in. I've tried every combination. Um, probably the thing I like next is with everything out, makes it a little lighter, but still keeps you know the general feeling. Um, it is pretty good just with the eye weights in and without the bottom uh, handle screws though. But Albert gives me that feeling that I used to have with, you know, when I first started the hobby, which is, holy shit, this is genuinely so much fun. And that is because I've always taken a liking to smaller, lighter, easier to flip, just fun balance longs. And the squiddies were like that. But because of the plastic, they had very bad tolerance issues and they weren't balanced the best and the grip was not great. The squiddies, uh, the, the plastic squiddies had an issue with the plastic warping and all of a sudden your, your pivots are not moving. Um, that's a very common issue with a lot of people or the plastic just bends in some way. Um, I know Ethan Squiddy B that, you know, We've spent a lot of time flipping that thing, making the early videos. That thing just locks up at this point. You, it's, it's very, very difficult to flip at all. Uh, and I know a lot of people who squiddies are like that. Um, but this doesn't have that problem because it is an aluminum ballast on. It is on washers, of course, uh, to be expected. And <sighs> I need to say this. Not every ballast song has to be on bushings. And just because a ballast song is on bushings, does not automatically make it better. That needs to be said because there seems to be a stigma that washers bad, bushings good. That's it. And that is not the truth at all. Bad bushings are so much worse than good washers. And Squid knows what they're doing when it comes to tuning washer ballast songs because realistically, it's not that hard if your production process is very good and Squid's production process is very good. Same thing machine-wise could come out with a washer-only version of the Prisma and it would be phenomenal tuning-wise. Is that a possum? Oh no, that's, that's a kitty. Okay. Um, it would be phenomenal tuning-wise because their production process is so good. Squid is very good at tuning washers. So it doesn't even feel like it's a washer only ballast song. There's very little movement here. And I mean, I've, I've broken it in a little bit, but especially when it was freshly oiled, um, when I got it from Ethan, put a little oil in it, this thing was not wiggling at all. Squid knows what they're doing when it comes to tuning washer ballast songs. So it has decent tuning. Of course, after a while it will wear out and you will get some play because again, it is only washers, but it has, the, the Albert has good tuning, a fantastic texture. This texture feels amazing on both the blade and the handles and a side texture as well, which was unexpected, but very, very welcome. And I think really completes Albert. A cute public friendly design. It's relatively affordable in the grand scheme of the Balasong community at I think $85 brand new, you can find them significantly cheaper on the secondhand market, especially when people start to get more of them and they start to cycle in and out. And it's just so much fun and it's such a casual fun flipper, which is what I do. I am not a high tier professional flipper. I, I don't compete in Ballycom. I'm not focused on my tech tricks. I don't care. I just want to have fun with the hobby and that's how, it, that's how it all started. And it got to a point why I took such a long break is because I wasn't having fun anymore. But Albert has brought that feeling back to me. And I have not put this thing down since I got it from Ethan a couple days ago. This It's just so much fun. And I just love it. It's just so freaking good. And it's just fun. And I love it very much and it was a good idea to do this after all, even though I had my doubts, and I'm sure a lot of people also had their doubts about a metal squiddy coming to the market, um, but they really did it. They did it, and they did it better 
than I expected them to because a metal squiddy, in order to fit the price point that it would have made sense, which is around where the squiddy is, just like right in the middle of the squiddy A and the uh, the Mako, around that, that $80 to $90 mark, in order to fit that price point, I was fully expecting just a squiddy made in aluminum with barely any changes. That's just what I was expecting because I know adding texturing, adding jimping, adding all this stuff adds a lot more cost than you would think. But somehow they managed to squeeze out a texture on every surface, literally every surface, even this front channel here. They managed to squeeze out a texture on every surface, surface, and implement a small weight system and keep it the price point that it needed to be at. So bravo squid. This is honestly one of my new favorite things in your lineup. And it's funny how that happens. Something you really aren't too keen on at first becomes one of your favorite things once it actually reaches fruition. And that is why you got to see your ideas through. That is a motivational speech. Um, anyways, yeah, this whole video is just a motivational speech. Um, anyways, the Albert is very, very good. Um, I'm not going to give you a, a super, you know, in-depth review because that's not what Blade Bias is for. Uh, this is for my thoughts, my opinions, and why I like a product. And it's cool. I've said everything I needed to say. I don't know how long this video has been, but it's been a long time because I ramble a lot. So anyways, Albert, very good. Good job, Lucas. Good job, crew. Uh, I will see you all at Blade Show, and I will buy one of these off of you if I don't buy it beforehand. Yippee. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye. Uh,